Uh, welcome to the Leader, Young Leaders for America Summit 2020. It's, there's a five part series. We are part three of the series. Um, it is my honor to be here with you all. My name is Anthony Lay, spells L-E, but pronounced Lay, as in legacy, as in I am here to help you build your legacy. Lay, as in legit, as in legitimately, I will be your best friend in this process. That means I won't be those like enabling best friends who will say, oh, everything's fine. I will be asking, I'll be challenging you all. I will be like, hey, here can you grow, right? I might even ask one of those hard questions that looks deep inside your soul and say, what is that you really want? Actually, there's about 118 of you all. I can't do all 118. So I have a group of facilitators about, I think between 20 facilitators who will be with us today to help us with that process. Um, lay also as in, let's go. As in, we are here today to do some personal growth, learning, and how to be really awesome leaders. Um, I am a leadership uh, of, I guess I could say like I live in the leadership world. I think ask, breathe leadership. I'm always thinking about what makes people tick, what motivates people, what's their why, and how to inspire people to live their greatest life. Uh, in particular, I'm doing this in the nonprofit world. I do this in the church world. And I also do this in the government world, the civic education world. Uh, and if you were to like describe me or like to describe me in one sentence, I would say, I would love to be the Ash Ketchum of leadership training. I want to be the best in the world and I want to train more leaders. That's why Ash, Ash, Ash Ketchum is right there. He's like, yes. Today's workshop is around how to become civic leaders with minority ethnic background. By the way, don't hold tight on this title because we're going to change it up later on. All right. But the idea is pretty much recognizing is like, you know, how we become civic leaders and what does it mean with be civic leaders with a minority ethnic background? We're going to go a little bit more into that later on, but I want to make sure I dedicate time for your growth. Now, this is not a normal keynote, like talk panelists, right? You're not going to be hearing a bunch of panelists who will be sharing your wisdom. I'm not that type of person who will just like talk in front of you all for like 20 minutes. And then at the end of the 20 minutes, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, I feel so inspired. I want to be like Anthony. No, that is never my goal. I don't want another version of Anthony. What I want is more leaders showing up the way they need to show up in the most authentic way possible so that they can influence the change that's unique to them. Because for folks who are in the North Pacific Northwest, I don't know what's going on in your town, right? Those who are in Dallas, those who are in New York, right? You don't need another version of Anthony there. What we need is actually your, like your best version of yourself, right? Stepping in a place of courage, holding other leaders accountable, coming from a place of integrity and alignment because that's what our community needs. But what we can do here in our group in these summits is that we get to support each other in this growth as leaders. So before we start, I do want to say this. Facilitators, if, you, when, if your camera's on, do me a favor right now. Um, and actually before that, everyone look at, the ca look at your screen, make sure you're in gallery mode and look at the facilitators. Facilitators, wave and say hi. Hello, everybody. Wave, 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 wave. I have never been able to figure out a reason or a way to bring in like over like 18, 17. I think we may have 20 facilitators now, right, from across the country to help like part of this process. Um, and this is amazing because if you think about it, they're all here dedicated because they really believe in creating space for everyone here to grow as leaders. I also want to thank the hype team. Uh, and the masterminds, oh, actually that's just redundant. The masterminds and the hype team, right? So that's PR, social media, tech, and planners uh, because they do a lot of work here setting us up for success. So if you see anyone who has the word tech in there or planner, PR, um, or facilitator, just send them a quick thank you. I believe the chat window is available, right? And it's actually really fun. Just send around a thank you. If they ask you why, just say, just leave it silent. Just leave them on red, okay? Hopefully people who are left on red won't get offended. Unless it's like iMessage, I guess, or Facebook. Um, our purpose today for the workshop, uh, we get a chance to explore the different parts of our identity that exists, uh, understand how we show up in our community, and discuss why this is important. And something I've learned over and over again. So last year, was it last year? Yeah. So we did an agenda last year for the retreat um, in Santa Clara University. And it was such an awesome experience. But the whole entire time we were doing all these like agenda items, something was always off. And on the last day, I said, you know, screw it. I don't believe this is the right schedule anymore. And I switched it up and we did an activity around the intersection identity. That was the most powerful 
moment that we could ever like create for ourselves because what happened was that you can't be a leader if you don't know who you are. Actually, let me phrase it. You can't be an effective leader if you don't know who you are. And it's so important to understand that part because you're going to be, I guess the word phrase was like, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for everything. And the idea is that when you know who you are and you know your values and you get to know like, like where your background's at from, where you, where's your background, where is your back, where you're from, what's your background, there you go. You actually start standing for something and you become a powerful voice. So earlier when I said about minority, like back, ethnic background, we're gonna get rid of that minority part because we're gonna learn how to be major voices. Um, so for this workshop, uh, a couple things we'll need from you all. The first and foremost is that make sure you have an extra cell phone, um, iPad or computer, because we're gonna do a little bit of polls. We're gonna do some journal writing. Um, camera on if it's possible. Uh, I just finished with two or three folks here. Uh, we just did a youth program and we really encourage you all to have your camera on. Uh, so I really encourage you all to show up, okay? Uh, when we do breakout groups, we will have a chance for you to turn on your mic. Now, if your mic doesn't work, that's okay. You can also do the chat window. You also need paper, pen, notebook for personal reflection. There is a good amount of reflection for this um, workshop, and that's because this is your work, okay? Uh, let's see here. Wow, okay, that's good. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I need to, Jerry says, I need to know how to maximize potential. You know what? This is the first step. I want to make sure I call people. My camera is actually dead. It flashes green and then it just don't work. Uh, so the person who messaged you that, don't worry, all right? As long as you're able to type and communicate in some way, you're good to go. Uh... <laughs> oh, by the way, I have to acknowledge this. My intro, I learned it from Vun. Vun's right there in the middle, Vun Nguyen. She taught me how to speak with awesomeness. All right, so in addition to what you need, um, there are some community guidelines. Um, so look through this guideline. I'm gonna go through this really quickly. If you cannot agree to all of this, I will kindly ask you all, just log off. I am one of those person who just like says, you know what? We have no room here for people who are lacking courage because we're gonna step into a safe space. If you feel like you can't acknowledge this, right? Then there's really no place for you because this place is about building bravery, building courage, building vulnerability so that we can actually be an authentic community to make authentic changes and authentic impact. So, approach with an open mind, open heart, open will. Okay, so um, let's see here. I'm gonna just throw it out there a little bit. Uh, just front, because we're gonna also test Mike a little bit. I see Edward Yu. What do you think open mind looks like? I mean, what is open mind? What do you think? Yeah, this is where you unmute. <laughs> He's like looking for the settings. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, it wasn't letting me unmute. I think uh, open mind means like being uh, open to like different ideas and being accepting of like what other people think, even if it's, it's something that might be something you disagree with or might be like potentially offensive. Sounds good. Now, Edward, choose the next name so that way I don't get in trouble. Uh... Like everyone's like getting ready for the mute button. It's like, oh crud, are they gonna choose Claire me? Men. Claire, what's open heart to you? I'm like trying to find Claire. Claire, are you there? Oh, unfortunately she may be having a problem with turning on her mic. So Edward, you gotta choose the next person. I'm sorry. Wah, wah. Here, I'll give you one. Jessica LaBarga. Jessica, why don't you go? And it looks like people are not allowed to unmute themselves. Unmute themselves. Can you, can the tech team make sure they're, oh, they have uh, the ability to unmute? Uh, yeah, one second. Yes. Well, I think open heart means um, being compassionate and respectful to um, what everyone else has to say um, and being understanding of where they're coming from when they say those things. Awesome. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> the reason why I put this, right, something I learned while my grad school, right, you know, start with open mind, right? Just thinking in like logically, keep your mind open. The open heart part is a little more difficult because something that you may not, you may dislike, 
right? It's allowing, like, just having the courage to be open to that, right? And so, for example, um, as cheesy as it sounds, right, I used to hate, no, actually, I still hate avocado, bad example. I used to not like vanilla ice cream. I thought it was really bland, okay? But sometimes you have a change of heart, and you realize vanilla ice cream can go really well with chocolate syrup, almonds, caramel, right? But in real life, let's think about, for example, open heart in the more social justice term was that I grew up in a Vietnamese community and my parents were very anti-black, right? They are lazy, they are crooks, right? And it takes an open mind to say, is that really the truth? And the open heart is like, you know what? I'm gonna accept who you are and understand that, you know what, some of this might be a lie and let me explore this. Even if it means that I might be disowned or ridiculed by my parents. Right. So open heart talks about like, you know, just like being courageous and open will is pretty much allowing yourself to act upon what comes from the open mind, open heart. So you have a chance to start thinking about like, you know, where do I want to approach? How do I want to move forward? Uh, community guidelines. In addition to that, honor each, each other's unique ways with respect and kindness. Use I statement. What's said here stays here. What's learned leaves. So that's more of like a small breakout group. Uh, give each other the opportunity to learn. This is really important. Some of us are in different parts of the journey, right? And give each other space to learn. And you know what? I know I'm like a lot older than some of you folks here, right? One of the biggest grace is like having folks allow me to learn, right? So I've had experience working with Kim, right? Who's one of your facilitator, right? Who's continuously texts and remind me through my group chat, like, hey, make sure you like take care of yourself. Make sure you like take it easy. And sometimes it's like, you know what? I need to learn how to take care of myself. And it's like my interns in the past who remind me how to be a better person. Okay. Oh, and my favorite one. Half thoughts are encouraged. This is fun. Let's go with, ooh, Vivian Chen. What do you think half thoughts are encouraged me? Um, I think a half thought is like um, when you start to like form an opinion on something, but you're like, sometimes when you um, think about something, you're not entirely sure where your mind is going, but I think sharing that is like more useful than keeping it all to yourself. I don't know. Okay, Vivian, thank you so much. Yes. Um, so this is something that has happened a lot. I don't know why. Culturally, sometimes we're taught to not speak up. Can I have a commitment and from you all that if you have a half thought, you'll step into a place of courage and be able to share it, even if it sounds wrong. And to do that, give me a thumbs up that you're willing to do that. Okay. Well, some people are just stalling. Some people are like, hmm. Okay. So what that means is if there's a question asked and you don't have the full answer, just go with it because that's how we learn, right? It's kind of counterintuitive because a lot of time is don't speak before you think and know your place, respect your elders. We're challenging all that today because this is for you, not for the adults, not to like show up on some website and people use us as some kind of promotional material. This is for us. Okay. Uh, Danae Bar, enjoy this journey together, all of us in gathering life. Long. Thanks, Anthony. Danae, I, did, I hope I pronounced your wrong name correctly. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Um, and that's where I'm gonna be a lifelong learner. I will butcher people's name, but I hope that you give me the grace to practice and learn. Um, okay, I gotta do a quick little thing first to get you all on the same page before we do our work, or not workout, our kind of like a workshop. So when we talk about understanding identity, there are a couple of things, right? It starts off with who are you, okay? Very simple as that. Um, identity is what we acknowledge and don't acknowledge within ourselves. Okay, an example of that would be, for example, and I've talked about this a long time, is that um, when I grew up, I recognized, like, this is a grade school, right? I'm a boy, right? Um, and I grew up with a lot of white influences, right? I grew up in an immigrant community, right? But, like, when you watch shows like Saved by the Bell, right? You're like, I wish I could be like that white guy, right? I wish I could be this person. And what happened is that I used it against myself, and I did not acknowledge that I was Vietnamese American, Okay. That's what I mean by like not acknowledging it, but it still exists that I am still a boy and I'm still Vietnamese American, despite how much I want to be white at a time. So there are parts of us that we may not be comfortable with, are comfortable with, right? That all exists, okay? Sometimes part of that is also recognizing like our sexual orientation, 
because the world sometimes is not as friendly to the LGBTQ plus community. And sometimes it's easier for us to be in denial. Some of us don't even want to come out, but it's still within the, it's still a part of us. Uh, identity plays a huge role in how we view our history, our community and ourselves. Once I started learning more about what it means to be Asian American, then I realized, you know, things like the Chinese Exclusion Act, 1882, that's pretty big, right? Um, or you talk about the new Exclusion Act, right? The new Chinese Exclusion Act would be the banning of TikTok in WeChat, okay? The banning of Chinese scientists, okay? Um, or the other part is, oh, I'm not Chinese, I'm Vietnamese, so I don't have to worry about those, like, those anti-Chinese hate and people being attacked. But guess what? Some people don't, can't tell a difference between different Asians. And that's bad. And when we look at that history, we start seeing ourselves and say, okay, you know what? There are probably different ways we need to look at this and know that when, until, everyone, until everyone is safe, everyone has, a, everyone's with, has justice, no one is protected. Uh, there are many different aspects to identity and these identities call, comes up are called intersections. So we are gonna talk about intersections, right? And this is a model done by this person named Kimberly Crenshaw. This changed my mind, okay? One of my favorite quotes associated with Kimberly Crenshaw was this. When someone walked up to her, they were like, hey, um, do you think you're discriminating because you're a woman or because you're black? And her response was, I'm discriminating because I'm both. So when we face discrimination or privilege, right, they stack on top of each other, right? They multiply. But these are the different intersections we're gonna to explore today. First one is racial ethic. Um, and this is an easy one. I'm gonna throw it out there. Uh, Jerry, because I saw you a couple of times, what do you think racial ethic means when we talk about intersection? Can they unmute still, Ray? It looks like, okay, there we go. Jerry, what do you think when I say racial ethic, what do you think we mean? Oh, hi. Um, racial ethnic? Well, I mean, if there's such thing as race, I mean, race is a social construct, but considering that people think that there are different types of races, I guess, I guess race would be like the inherited traits that people are born with, like skin color, but ethnic is what the culture that you are that you are raised in, um, basically. Thank you. Yes, appreciate that very much, right? As much as we want to think, like, believe and understand that race is a social construct, guess what? You'll still be perceived by, by other folks. Um, economic, social class, when we talk about that, uh, we're talking about, in terms, let's talk about economics, right? We're talking about low income, middle income, middle income, upper income. When we talk about social class, right? I feel like there's also like this, like this world of social media, right? Like based on influencer, right? There's different types of classes. There's different types of social classes um, that associate. Religious, that's a really big one. Um, Christian, right? Are you Muslim? Are you Buddhist? Are you the other ones, which we don't acknowledge sometimes, right? And imagine if you're just the quote unquote other, how does that make you feel? Um, gender, oh, fun question. With your hand, this is always fun. Gender, how many gender are there with your fingers? Tell me right now. How many, with your fingers, how many genders are there? <laughs> okay, I see the top screen, good. The people who are not doing anything right now, are you telling me there's zero or are you telling me that you're gonna conform? Calling you all out, because I am not gonna let you settle. There's more than I can count on my hands. Thank you, Henry, I appreciate that. Yes, right. Uh, people used to think gender is a binary thing, right? But you know what? It's a whole entire spectrum. There's so much to this we don't know, right? And this is an example right there where open mind is looking at the signs as like, are there different parts, like a different gender that exists? Open heart is learning how to accept that. Open will is, are we going to start passing rules and laws that are more inclusive? Uh, sexual orientation, um, the LGBT community is really, um, the LGBTQI is a good example of that, of the spectrum right there, right? Um, disability, I wanna throw this on there a little bit. What do you think I mean by disability? And I'm gonna choose Priscilla. Let's see if Priscilla knows. Um, I thought it was interesting, it was in um, 
<laughs> what are those called? <laughs> um, but I think that disability is um, some of us are um, born or have inherited throughout our lives challenges um, with doing certain whether it be academically, physically, I think that's what you mean by disability. Yes. So thank you so much for that. Um, Disability, when we think about it, right, we can think about physical disability, right? It's like, uh, I have a cousin who has polio, and for the longest time, he just can't walk, right? Now he walks around crutches. But we also talk about the invisible disability, right? ADHD, um, having, like, border, borderline, all right, having borderline or having um, bipolar um, diagnosis, uh, mental depression, mental health, sorry, depression, mental health-related issues like that, right? So these are really good important things to think about because when we, as you all step into leadership and as you start talking about like, what do you mean to be like a voice for like with a minority ethnic background, we have to think about the different things that exist within us. Okay, let me double check here because it is, I'm gonna see if there's anything else. Um, why is intersection so important? With the conversation around discrimination and privilege, how we see the world. Once you start looking through the lens of intersectionality, you start understanding more about why people struggle the way they struggle. Um, one of my favorite stories was this, it was like, you know, I've been looking more about like social economic class and racial ethnicity. And I always thought I was like a really good ally until I walked into a drama juice in grad school with my friend. The guy was like, my friend was like, hey, can I use the restroom? And the girl goes, I'm sorry, that's for customers only. And I thought about that and I was like, interesting. We just had a Starbucks issue just like an hour, like a month ago. And now this girl is questioning her friend who is black. I, and I challenged that. I was like, that wasn't very nice, but it wouldn't, I would have never once considered different ethnicity and, and speak up even that small bit if I never saw the world through the lens of intersectionality. So when we call these conversations, it's gonna be around discrimination, privilege, how we see the world and how we start seeing ourselves fully. With that said, we are gonna do a poll. So here's the fun thing. Let's see if this works. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna stop sharing reshare because that did not work as much as I thought it would. All right, folks, at this very moment right here, go to menti.com, use the code 601068. We're gonna do a poll. Keep in mind, I have a number of 122. So my goal is that we have at least 90 people respond. Um, for the adults, you are responding. And just for fun. Oh, there's the first response. It's now time to throw on some music. Uh, before we split up, I want to encourage you all to really come from a place of authenticity. Acknowledge that you can grow, like how we just did today, just right now with the diverse ability. Um, give each other space, okay? Uh, with that said, Ray, are we good to start splitting? Uh, yes. Good. All right, everybody. Wonderful facilitators, take it away. Work your magic. Uh, everyone should be coming back now. Um, I have about 15 minutes to close fully, make sure there's time for like um, everything else. But so there are a couple of things we're going to do right now. Uh, lovely about, oh, I love Ruby as well. Uh, I will, I don't know how to, sh you know what? I will, I'm, I'll create a playlist and I'll find a way to ask Dylan to share that with everybody. I'm going to write that as a note right now.
Dylan, send, share, playlist. It's a whole smorgasbord of stuff, okay? Um, I wanna make sure we value our time. Quick question, uh, write down in the chat window, and this is where I'm gonna use my massive, like crazy, like lack of attention span brain to read everyone's comment right now. Write down in the group chat right now, and so everyone can see how was that experience? What was the takeaway from that experience? Write it down really quickly, type it out, because I want everyone to be able to have a chance to see everyone's experience so far. Uh, and this is the best way I've seen that has worked for a lot of folks. Um, is it Favri? Favri? It's Tavri. I'm sorry? Tavri. Tavri. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Tavri. What do you mean by it was very insightful? Trap. <laughs> Um, I believe it was insightful because people, they share, you know, different perspectives of how they identify and their experiences. So I did, you know, take away something new, you know, regards to, you know, where they come from, their place on how they identify and how others may identify, how they can use that position to help others. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Do me a favor, everyone, just do a plus one for her, for being a share. Thank you so much. Um, cool. 1.2. All right. Show off. Where did the 1.2 show off? I saw that really quickly. All right. Other folks. Um, oh, whoa, whoa, too fast, too fast. Uh, you know what? The next name I see, Emily. Emily Chang. Talk to us. What was that experience? Elaborate for us. Um, so I just said in the chat, I was, I was really um, surprised by how we could bond over our shared experiences. Kind of, we, we touched on our racial ethnic identity. A lot and we also I also got to learn a lot about um, other people's struggles with their identity and just how I guess like the next step is to know what we can do to support um, our peers and yeah just we we got to we had this like breakout prompt about like when have we felt like we were put in the box um, based on assumptions that other people made about us and I thought that was really insightful. Thank you Emily for sharing that yeah like it's interesting because we know what it's like to be put in a box. We know what it feels like to be judged or stereotyped, right? It sucks, right? But I love it that you all start to think about, it's like, you know, how can we support each other? And some part of it, I feel like it's like, how to support each other to be authentic ourselves. Um, oh, ooh, I'm, I'm getting a name, I'm getting a name. Julie Hoffer, is that right? Julie, I'm, I'm hearing Julie's name in my head right now. Talk to us. Oh, hi. Um I really liked how our group, like we were able to like share our experiences and stuff. Like we talked about um, making assumptions and then like how we can kind of like avoid that. And just like even just acknowledging that you are making assumptions about people. Like it's how like important that is. And I just really like how um, like nobody was like judgmental or anything you could share with like, like we don't know each other. And it was a very like eye-opening experience. Gotcha. Thank you so much, Julie. I don't know why that name came up, but it just showed up. Um, maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe it was just on the tip of my shoe, like a van or something, my vans. I don't know. Um, I want to hear maybe like two more folks. Um, so uh, facilitator, if you want to expose anybody in your group, now's the time. Because I'm pretty sure this is the only time we can do that without getting in trouble. Pull me in, coach. All right. I don't know who's coach, but Jason, go for it. Are we just like sharing our thoughts here? Yeah, I, I want to hear your takeaway. How was that experience? Yeah, so I, I was, um, I, I think it was really good. Um, even even though my group was like a little bit on the quiet side, we got a, we got a lot a lot out. I, I found it kind of funny how like a lot of us had very similar privileges that we said we either felt comfortable with or we also felt um, we were, we were um, uncomfortable with. Um, and it was just, it was, <clears throat> It was just really good to, you know, you're pulling from ideas from people all over the country. Um, and even at the end, actually, I actually sort of uh, communicated how some parts of this webinar are actually even even disagree with on the um, position side of taking uh, regarding privileges and stuff. Um, but, you know, I just want to ma maintain an open mind, um, open mind, and maybe this webinar will change those ideas. You know, you, just, you have to be open to everything. So that was that breakout room was a great example of that. Thank you for that. And I, I don't know, but the assumption was that, you know, there is going to be polarity when it comes to like issues like this. And I really appreciate right. you all being able to do that. 
Oh, Anoop just exposed Dylan. Is Dylan James Ocampo one name, three names? Uh, hey, hi everyone. Um, my first name is Dylan, my middle name is James, and my last name is Ocampo. Um, so with my breakout room, uh, I really had a great conversation with everybody there. And we discuss oh, so many things, uh, where to start. Uh, one of the things, well, well, we went through the prompts and we talked about how, um, about the like, idea that, uh, so, that has been touched on about, you know, being put in the box and how um, it's important to be, um, to be aware of intersectionality and how, like for me example, not just being Asian, but also being part of the LGBTQ community and how that unique experience shapes the way um, I interact with the environment. And one of the prompts was have we ever judged anybody based on, you know, just made judgments about, about um, anybody in the community. And for my response, I said that, you know, I would be lying if I didn't. Um, but I think it's important to that, uh, to be aware of those biases and how they affect the people um, in the community. So that's, I, that's one of the biggest, I think, takeaways is to really be aware of the biases and stereotypes you make about other people and how that affects them. Um, because we all, uh, I, you know, I think it's just human nature for us to judge and there is nothing wrong with that, but it's, like I said, just to reiterate, it's important to be aware um, of your judgments and how they affect other people. Um, there was so much to talk about. Um, on the top of my mind, um, that's all I have to say, I think. Um, yeah, no, yeah. thank you. No, I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate you giving us insight. Um, Oh, you got like, you're getting little props right there, right there. Plus ones or plus ones. Um, Kim, so I trust Kim a lot. So Kim's getting a lot of hyper here for Danae. All right, I want to hear from Danae, right? Because something about allyship, I, I don't understand. In line us, Grace is your present, Danae, if you can. Hi, hi, hi. What, what, what are you asking now? I'm sorry, I was so busy typing in the chat. No, no, no worries. Um, yeah, know. like... So, <laughs> How was your experience in this one? Because you know, it was, like it was Kim was saying you're an ally. Yeah, 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 yeah. And let me and, and I actually went in and said why I'm an ally of of the Asian community and why I'm in this particular group and why I have interest. First of all, I've spent a lot of time um, living, traveling, working among the Asian community, specifically in China, uh, uh, but also. I had, friends, you know, Thailand, et cetera, a lot of places in Asia. And um, I also brought the point that when I was very, very young, when I was like in elementary school, there were Asian families, you know, in, in, you know, in my school. So I was introduced to the culture, you know, at a very young age, but I've also spent a lot of time in Asia um, uh, with families. I mean, with, with families living in small villages, et cetera. And so uh, and plus, I, I, I know the history, I know the history of, 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 of things that have happened within the, the Asian community and uh, world, uh, global issues, et cetera. And so I think because I have spent a lot of time, but I do want to, I, I did not also make a note that um, I actually have family members, whereas I have a cousin, her father is African American, her mother is Korean. Um, and then I have family members who um, are married to people from China. They're African American. They're married to people from China. So a lot comes into why I'm here. Uh, and I really identify with Asian culture because I have family members. Plus, I spent a lot of time in Asia as well. Uh, so um, yeah, that's 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 me. <laughs> and then, thank you so much for sharing with us. Okay, sure, absolutely. Uh, I am hitting a time banner very soon. I want to make sure I respect people's time because my understanding, we're going to finish this at 2.30. That means I have four minutes to do this really quickly. Uh, first and foremost, do me a favor. Everyone do a plus one or plus 9,000. If it's, if it's over 9,000, I totally down for that. If you understood that joke, that's awesome. Um, I want to make sure I wrap it up in a nice little package for the meantime, okay? Uh, but in reality, this conversation, you can never really wrap it up. Right, you can only just like settle for what we have at the moment and continue the work afterwards. Um, so I want to respond to earlier in the chat. They were talking about idea of like neurodiversity, talking about diversity, um, and 
the thing about intersectionality, right, is like you could always go on another level deeper and another level deeper. Okay, for example, when we talk about Asian American representation for the longest time in this network, right, there were just a lot of, like a lot of East Asian, right, tended more on the Chinese side. Then I started seeing more like Korean and Japanese, right. And then I realized it's like, where's, where's all my Southeast Asian brothers and sisters? Actually, no, I got corrected. Where's all my Southeast Asian siblings? Okay. Making sure we're inclusive now, right? Not just brothers, sisters, but siblings. And then there's also the South Asians, right? Like in my community, right? We talk about diversity, right? And there's a lot of South Asians here working in tech sector, but for some reason I see them lacking. I'm like, what the heck? Right. Another like intersection, right? It's like, you know, like multi-ethnic, multi-ethnic, right? One of my dear friends, when I'm learning from, right? She's Filipino and black. Okay, does she, because she's black or Fil and Filipino, does she, is she one less of the other, right? We also have my friend and dear friend here, Claire, right? Half Chinese, half white as well, right? And we have to start thinking about like, you know, when we talk about intersections, right? We talk about like the whole entire person as well. Um, so there's something I, like, this is like in the Bible, right? I'm not trying to preach this one, right? But there's always this idea of like, love your neighbor, also love your enemy as you love yourself. Um, and I feel like it's always short one thing. Right. It's easy to love someone along the person exists in front of you, but we don't acknowledge it. If they're invisible, we can't love that person. This workshop is really to help us to think about the different places, places, people that we don't acknowledge. Right. And that means we have to make the work and say who's missing at this table when we talk about decision about building community. <clears throat> Which ties into the next part, right, is that there's always a short amount of time. Right. And we want to make sure that we always find ways to get time like doing a whole entire workshop around intersectionality with an hour and a half is very difficult, right? This is continuing work. So I'm giving back the responsibility to you all to continue the work. Um, and then the next part, right, is like, I told you earlier about this like issue I had with minority, like the title. I'm really not a big fan of the word minority because sometimes we're made to feel small with the word minority. And so for us, right, this workshop is about representation, representation for people like us, uh, for those who share our same struggles, and then also to acknowledge those who are not in this community, but to bring them into the community. Um, and so it's really important to start to know our background in different section. In this case, I wanna acknowledge the, our ethnic background. So I, I'm taking liberty, sorry team, for like changing the title. We're gonna change this one, right? Because this is the message I want you all to leave with. It's becoming civic leaders with their ethnic background, right? That's the big thing, right? And what that means is that you run for office, you become nonprofit for, you become board members for nonprofits. My other favorite one, right, is like um, seeking representation. Think about the different intersections, right? So if you're voting for somebody, right, do they represent different intersection? Can they represent different intersection, right? Mr. Biden here, right? Yeah, he's a white man, but you know what? Can he represent like, right? An example, right? And I'm, let's be fair, right? Can Trump represent the different intersections, right? Only we are able to figure that out and understand that by how they speak and what's like how they present themselves. Right. Um, I'm not encouraging either way to vote, but the question is that when we talk about representation and when we vote, right, that's our civic. It's like how to become civic leaders. It's through voting. And it's like by saying, like, can you represent the different intersection, not just for myself, but the other intersection? And that's our responsibility and obligation to each other as leaders. OK, um, with that said, thank you all so much. Oh, my God, it's 2.30. So I had to make sure it's really fast. You have to do the survey. Let, let us know how we did. Um, <laughs> I am so sorry. Can I buy two more seconds of your time? Please fill out the survey. Um, Dylan, you want to talk about this really quick? Because I don't want to make sure I want to make sure I don't misrepresent. About this survey? Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we have this survey going on right now. Um, after you fill out this survey, this just gets some general information. We will send you a badge. Our PR team will send you a badge. And this badge will um, enable you to, if you get four out of the five, we are doing five webinars over the course of the summer as well as part of the early fall. Um, should you join us, should you fill these out and get these badges, we will send out a certificate to those who have four badges. Um, this is a certificate of general leadership, as, et cetera, and um, is granted by CIUSA Civic Leadership USA, a 501c3 nonprofit, which we'll be talking about very soon, I believe. Um, so yeah, go ahead and fill out this um, survey form if you could. We would greatly appreciate any feedback you have for us. And then Ching, and I, think I think for this, this or is it Dylan? Vincent or Ching should take this one out. Yeah, so uh, one last thing, everyone. Uh, I'm, I am pleased to be able 
just announced that we'll be having our fourth webinar next month on Saturday, September 12th. The topic of the next webinar is mobilizing the community, which is, a, which is what I think one of the most important things we can talk about because what are all these webinars for? We don't do anything about it for what, are we, for what we learned. Uh, our keynote speaker will be California Assembly member Evan Lowe, who will have ma many insightful thoughts to share with you about his own experiences in interacting with this community. Uh, furthermore, our panelists will range from a much wider group than what we presented to you before, so we're really excited to see how you guys interact with them. And then I guess I could talk a little bit about this one really quickly, right? So this is sponsored and presented. Uh, this wouldn't have happened without Civic Leadership USA. Um, it's a 501c nonprofit, nonpartisan, right? And the goal is to empower and engage, to train, connect, to create a pipeline for civic leaders, okay? Um, I use a more flexible, like, lax definition of what civic leaders, right? It could be straight from just voter education um, to all the way to running for office or being staffer, legislative, st legislative staffers, or in some part, any part of that system. Um, so definitely fill out the survey, let us know. Um, and can I have one of the team members to copy the link to the survey in the chat so we have that? Um, and then, of course, this is organized by Young Leaders for America with the, with the three simple words, equip, embolden, and engage. Um, how do we do? Let us know. So. Um, Please fill out the survey, let us know what's going on. These are the special thank yous, our partners. Um, oh, hey, look, there's my, there's my business right there, consulting pivotal moments, because we're always at pivotal moments to make a decision what we want to do. Uh, just have to plug that in there. Um, thank you to our facilitators, our social media marketing team, our tech team. Uh, in particular, a uh, special thank you to Dylan for helping us, like helping me recruit our amazing facilitators. Uh, thank you to the Apolly Network who recruited, uh, who I've asked and they graciously dedicated their time today to be here. Um, Apolly Network is actually my full-time job. And then also I didn't want to forget uh, Lon who is from UC USD, University of San Diego, who was a grad student alongside with me, uh, who was graciously uh, donating her time. She's probably going to ask me and charge me for boba later on. I owe you boba. She's smiling. She knows it's cut. I know it's coming and it's true. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and I have a request to go back to the survey. So I'm going to go back to the survey. I will have this here for you all. And team, is there anything else? If not, I am going to end it with music. Oh, Joyce says, connect and follow our wild face social media. Um, oh, by the way, they're great hyping. A couple of days ago, they just hyped me up on like Instagram, like, whoa. So that's new to me. With that said, thank you all so much. Sorry for a minutes, but I appreciate your time so much. Thank you all for giving each other, each other space and attention and allowing each other to grow. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday.